hello. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good, good morning. Very good. Good. Well, I'm excited to be back this week. My name is Katie Cummings. I'm the founder of Pink Umbrella Theater Company, and I am here with the cast and crew of Wink, uh, which opens tomorrow. Uh, so being a teacher, the teacher that I am, I would love it if everybody would um, introduce themselves. Tell us a little bit about your uh, theater journey in Milwaukee. And just because it is freezing out today, what is your favorite thing about fall? <laughs> so your name, a little bit about your history in Milwaukee theater and something about fall that you enjoy. Who's ready to go first? I will go first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm going to sit on the other side of the table today. So uh, my name is Jamelyn Gray. I am the artistic director of The Constructivist. Um, uh, I uh, moved back to Wisconsin, to Milwaukee uh, in we finished moving in 2018. It was quite the process. Story for another time. Um, I was actually in Milwaukee late, late aughts, 08, 09. And uh, Jamie, mute yourself. Okay, ready? I've been down this road before. Mute yourself. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and unmute yourself when you're, when you're, when you're ready to talk. Um, uh, okay. So, and then, uh, and so I was here in the late, in the late 08, 08, 09, did like the Young Playwrights Festival at Milwaukee Chamber Theater and things like that. But, you know, the recession was just about to hit. And so things were starting to, you know, get weird. I think it was just, you know, whatever universal timing or whatever you want to call that. So then I moved on to Chicago and spent a decade in Chicago and then came back and then started a theater company because that's what you're supposed to do. You're like, you're not supposed to wait around for work. You're just supposed to make your own work. So I did that. And so I, you know, I was predominantly an actor up until now and have been directing nonstop for whatever, three years now. Yeah. That's great. What's your favorite thing about fall? More clothes. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. I know. My favorite thing is, is, a, is a scarf. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you. Uh, Akane, how about you? Yeah, I can go. Uh, hello, I'm Akane. Um, I am very new to the Milwaukee scene. Um, I grew up in Minnesota, and then I went to Madison for school, and I graduated a couple years ago and kind of hung around there and worked for a bit, and I just moved to Milwaukee this summer. Um, I So my resume is pretty short uh, here. I've done a couple of things with Katie at the Pink Umbrella Theater. I was in Jerome uh, for stage directions earlier this spring. I think it was like, it was March. Yeah, March. Um, and that was an online virtual production. And then I was in Shine uh, as well, directed by Fletcher. Um, and that was this summer. That was fun. And so now I'm doing Wink with the Constructivists and Jamelin. And it's going really great. Uh, and hopefully we'll continue. Uh, well, not necessarily Wink, because we don't want to just do the same play over and over. Uh, we could, but <laughs> well, um, with other Constructivist productions. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my involvement in Milwaukee. Uh, my favorite thing about fall, I guess... I do like um, doing things like using blankets and warmer clothes because when it's cold, when you're cold, it's easier to like put more clothes on. But like when it's hot, like there's only so far you can go, and you're still hot and stuff. So uh, it's easier to get warm than to stay cool. I, I'm I'm loving this theme, and you can tell that all of us have like immediately transitioned from 70 degrees to 50 or whatever it is <laughs> today because we're like more. We need more things, and I want to wrap myself in them. Awesome! Thanks, Agony. Jamie, I can't wait to hear from you. Hi, uh, I'm Jamie Jastrap. Um, I my theater journey started actually up in West Bend, which is just a little bit north here at the university up there. And I did a lot of stuff there and then eventually moved, migrated down to Milwaukee and I've worked with the Boulevard Theater, Acacia Theater, and a couple other, you know, community theater groups in, this, in, the, in and around Milwaukee. And um, I've done a lot of different things. And um, 
And then now I'm now doing Wink again. This is my third production with the construction of this. So I'm really excited to keep going here. I'm excited to get back into live theater. Uh, favorite thing about fall, I like being outside a lot. So I like the fact that there's no more bugs. You know, all of a sudden it gets cold and the bugs just kind of all go away. So that's my favorite thing. Agreed. Thanks, Jamie. I Yeah, I hear that. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh, no mosquitoes, no flies, <laughs> no nothing, right? Um, yeah. yeah, I love it. Uh, yes, Michael, this is a good group of, like, of people. Um, we're excited. So we're excited to be here today. Um, Jamie Lynn, I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with you. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about Wink. Like little, I would love to know like a short synopsis of the play. Um, and then I'm going to ask, then I'm going to ask you some questions. Uh, yeah, Wink is a Wink is a really, really new play uh, written by Jen Silverman, who is a playwright who in the theater universe is just on fire right now. It was just being produced all over the place and all of her plays everywhere. A lot of stuff. The first place that I came in contact with her was in Chicago and saw two plays in the time span of about like a year. Uh, and, um, just, just really love her writing style and, and love the, and love the, her narrative and the stories that she tells, uh, and the way that she tells them. Um, so Wink is about, uh, a married couple who, uh, are, uh, seeking, uh, betterment in their relationship and go and seek the advice from a therapist, Dr. Franz. And uh, rather uh, unorthodox uh, is, is a good way to put it. That's that just a little outside the box type thinking type person. And, uh, and they've been seeing Dr. Franz for a bit, but things, the, the, the shit really hits the fan when the cat goes missing. And, uh, and so uh, that's, that is their most recent point of contention and, and it explodes from there literally and uh no just literally it just literally kind of explodes from there yeah but no animals were harmed in the making of this play no animals were harmed in the making of this play that is correct okay yeah i get worried there cat cat goes missing there's an explosion just just making sure okay so so why this play why now well, uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of things that that uh, I think everybody knows by now that we were intending to do the another remount, um, uh, and just things just didn't work out, and that happens sometimes in theater. It actually happens a lot, and you just don't hear about it. And so um, we, I started scrambling with my literary team to find something super fast, and was reading a whole bunch of things and just nothing was, nothing was fitting and nothing was fit. Cause I was, what I was trying to do was whoever wanted to, whoever had the time and capability to stay on the project and wanted to do something this fall, I was going to find a, a, a piece for them. And so that ended up being Jamie and uh, Matt Scales and Rebecca Farr were like, I'm, that they were interested in, in, in continuing on to this fall. And uh, so trying to find a piece to um, fit, that and so I sent them a couple things over the course of you know just to get their okay and whatever and, and and this was the one that when I read the first scene which is only three pages long and then like read the first sentence on the next page I went yep this is one that we're doing and I you know I sent it over and um what really took the longest time was getting the rights because Jen Silverman is so popular and we're a very small non-equity company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, it, it took a hot second. And so we actually did not get the rights until the day after Labor Day. And I had to call everybody or like message everybody and God, like any connection that I had. It was like, who do you know over at Concord Theatricals who <laughs> made this happen? Um, but, we, but we got the rights. And so it, I had to do auditions then. And so we sent out like things on the internet and, and private things. And so we had, you know, we really only had like a handful of people have audition into audition and the way that the pieces fell, uh, Ekene popped in and that's how that works. 
Sweet. So, so, um, so Ekene and Jamie, uh, talk, let's talk a little bit about, um, it's been a long time since we did live theater together, right? Um, so tell me a little bit about either the audition process and or, um, and or like that first read and the, and the rehearsals that you've been having, how, how are those going? How do they feel? Um, let's talk a little bit about that. Tell me about your, your journey. Um, for the audition, it was really fun because um, you got, well, we all read for different parts. You know, it was kind of like a round robin and stuff. So that was really fun. Um, and then once we settled in, the actual rehearsals, it was kind of funny because people would just talk a lot, you know, because I don't think we've been with new people for, you know, you had like your group of people. And so we would get into rehearsals and all of a sudden you just start talking about other things, you know, just in low breaks and all and that would really go a lot longer i think than maybe we should have but you know but it was just fun just to be with new people and, you know and it's just really exciting you know and the whole process is just really something that i missed over the last you know year and a half two years so yeah i love what you said like you you you're with new people all of a sudden <laughs> so it's like the, you just you you're probably telling stories that you wouldn't normally even share um, and, and not getting to the work right away because you're enjoying those interactions. Yeah, I love I love that. I love that. Ekene, how about you? What's your take on audition to audition to rehearsal? Yeah, it was all it was all fun. Um, the audition was it was different just because it was virtual and I've never done a virtual live. I mean, I guess for Shine, I kind of did, but a lot of the people I knew just from other things. And it was also because Shine was nonverbal, like we didn't really say anything. So this was like the first live virtual audition I did where I was actually like reading dialogue and act, like doing all that acting stuff. So, but it was fun. Uh, it was cool to meet new people, Jamie and Scales were there, Jamelin was there, uh, Rebecca was there, which was nice since I already knew Rebecca. Um, and then, yeah, basically what Jamie said, like being in the rehearsal process, like, yeah, I, especially for me, cause I was like really new. So I didn't really know any of these people. And like, I mean, I knew Rebecca, but we didn't really interact a lot during Shine. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. It's been uh, exciting. Uh, definitely digging deep into the piece. Jamelin is a, a great director and definitely pushes us and does a good job of allowing the conversations to kind of go. And then is like a good job of like, all right, let's let's get started. Um, so yeah, that is it's all been really great. I mean, I want to I want to piggyback on that because I I I've said this and I say this to my actors and I and I and it. We do socialize a bit, um, but I feel like the kind of work that we do, the constructivist, is really difficult and it requires a lot of trust and vulnerability. And I think some of, I believe that that can be developed in the rehearsal room by just asking, how is your day? How are you doing? what good happened to you today? Like those types of things. And, you know, we've got some great storytellers in the room. And so, you know, sometimes they, they, they just, they go, they go a bit, but, um, but when they work, they work. And so I, I, I feel that it's for the betterment of the process to, to, to build that camaraderie and relationship and, and, you know, and connection personally, not just actor wise. Yeah, I hear that. And like, and as a director, you want, you want those, you want solid relationships on and off stage, right? Um, because I, I, I've always felt that if you, if you have a good, uh, if you have a good solid relationship with your cast and your ensemble, that is going to, that, that authenticity is going to come through in, in the relationships on stage. So I want to get into that for a little bit with you all. What, um, can you tell us, tell us your character and, and maybe tell us, um, Jamie and Akane, tell us a little bit about your journey from, I don't want you to give anything away, but just, uh, you can either talk about your journey as an actor from, you know, from 
the beginning until we open, right? You open tomorrow night. You've got you've got some live audience members. Uh, I know every time I say that, Jay Malin's eyes get really big. It's gonna be okay. You're exactly where you are. This is the process, Jay Malin, right? Like take a deep breath. Um, but tell tell me a little bit about <laughs> take another one. Um, tell me a little bit about Jamie and Ekene. Tell me a little bit about your journey as an actor in this piece. For Jamalyn, she's mentioned it a couple of times. There's there's trust and vulnerability that happens within this piece. So let's talk just a little bit about about that journey as an actor um, within your characters. Yeah, um, it's it's been it's been we we do a lot of work uh, outside of just the socializing, but just at like activities in rehearsals to just kind of like build that bonding experience and the trust between everyone since at times the play can be emotionally difficult um and not just from a watching aspect but from like a actually like performing that um and i think especially for me as an actor like one of the things that jim lynn is always telling us is like don't internalize don't internalize don't internalize and like i feel like i internalize a lot of things i watch like a lot of film a lot of movies and a lot of like and stuff and so like i i'm always and that's something that i want to do in the future but i'm always thinking about like how things are shown on a screen like especially when it comes to a theater you know people are further away it's not up close and personal but especially with something like this that's moving really fast uh, and gets to all these highs and stuff like that like really being able to just ah, put it all out there uh is something that we've had to work on well i think it's important to note too that it's this particular style of this play that required you to be more external than you know subtextual you know mm -hmm. right right and yeah doing that and working on that because like i we are all because it's such a small cast like in a, like in, a, in addition to having to trust each other we also have to like be able to play off of each other and feed off of each other's energy and so we we all kind of have to reach this high level of like just going so that like one person in this scene is going the other person is also like oh okay and they're also going you know um so that's that's kind of been the process to hear from the beginning until now and i feel really comfortable in uh, all the scenes with everyone, um, and it's 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 been really good, um, and yeah, it's been really good. And I I feel I feel I definitely feel like there's been a huge amount of progress, especially yeah, since it was it was fast. You know, as Jamelin said, rights came in after Labor Day, and auditions and rehearsals started basically right away. And here we are, end of October, putting on the show, uh, and. Yes, it's 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 good. It's I, I like where it's at. And Akane, what part do you play? Oh yes, uh, I play Gregor. I play the husband okay. uh, who's in the troubled married couple that Jamelin was talking about. Looking for the cat. Okay, yeah. or maybe you're not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think uh, the trip is always for me. I think um, very incremental, and and I think somehow sometimes i don't think you can really see where you began at because you you moved along so slowly or maybe in in jumps or fits and starts i think too you know and where you're trying to achieve the right emotional tone in the scene and in the you know proper openness and you know it's not for me to be really open it, it's really a process that i have to work and trust you know your scene partners with um, and in this part, in this play is no exception. It's been that way too. You know, I think I'm still, still constantly working on trying to be as open as I can in the scene. And I play Wink. I'm the cat. Believe it or not. You're the cat. And, um, I can't yeah. wait to see this play. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't explode. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. No cats are harmed in this yet. So. I'm maybe, um, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was, I, I was gonna say, like, I, I, I guess my question, my follow-up question to the two of you actors is, 
what do you need in that rehearsal room to be open to take those leaps to take that you know to take that jump what what are you looking for in, in a rehearsal room um, that creates that space for you um i think a lot of times too is it's understanding where your character is at and that's where i think jamlin's really good for us is you know, at least for me is like kind of saying well think about this line in this way you know and can you be more open in this way you know where you just might think it's a throw off line or a transition line or something and you don't think it is of it as an opportunity to be open and i think that it is the process you know it, it, there's more and more opportunities every time you rehearse to look for something that, where you can be open, and connect with your actors. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Akane, how about you? What what makes a place safe? Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, just uh, the there's just a couple of lines where it's just, especially for me, I either didn't fully grasp the intent behind them or like I the intent I was going with or felt wasn't necessarily the right one. And so Jamie would like offer a different perspective and it's definitely come together into more of a cohesive unit um, that fits like the tone and everything. And just in addition to that, just being feeling like we can be open with each other because there's definitely a lot of honesty needed for the show to work um, and that can only really work if we are honest with each other as actors. Um, and yeah, it's just, that's that's definitely what is needed for the, um, the safe to feel, sp the space to feel safe <laughs> and just communicating, uh, uh, letting people know things are okay. You know, like it, it gets, it gets very close and personal. And so, you know, just constantly checking in with, uh, the people that you're in scenes with to make sure that, um, we are all on the same page still. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think that that's such an important conversation for us as theater makers to have. Um, you know, when I was, learning and growing up and and doing theater uh it was like just you know get it together and do your stuff right like there was nothing about creating a, a, an ensemble or, or or even like talking about creating a safe space it was just get to work do your thing you know be vulnerable <laughs> cry on cue um but I, I i actually love i love the fact that we are taking a step back from that kind of rigor and and greeting one another and learning about one another because i do again it goes back to those authentic relationships and if you're able to build those relationships off stage we will see them on stage and the performance i think will be will hit home a little bit you know um in a in a in a kinder way in a in a heartfelt way and in a mind mindful way no matter what the subject um the subject area is this is my little soapbox for, for today. Um, so we talked about keeping our actors safe and creating a safe space there. Let's, um, you have a play that's coming up. Let's talk a little bit about creating a safe space for the audience. Let's get into like the where, the when, the tickets, where, how do we, how do we see this? So Jamelin, I'm gonna kick that over to you to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, well, yeah, we open tomorrow and it runs through uh, November 6th. We close on a Saturday because I don't close on Sundays. I think it's weird. Uh, yeah. I think it's weird. Um, and uh, we are following uh, COVID protocols. Um, this, what, I mean, we're in the Broadway Theater Center now, so they, they really have a specific set. Not that we wouldn't do this anyway, but because it's just a smart thing to do. Um, but you'll need to wear a mask. Audience will, will need to wear a mask. You will need to bring your ID and a vaccination card with you or a COVID test within a negative COVID test within 72 hours. Um, and we will try and have hand sanitizer for you. And um, the runtime on the show is it's super fast. It's it's me saying 70 minutes is really generous. Uh, so it's, it is fast and furious and, and, uh, and hopefully a, a lot of fun. Um, you can, you can go to the constructivist.org and you'll have some paths to make that, to make your ticket sales happen. Um, the Broadway theater center, uh, their ticketing system for whatever reason, 
uh, it has a lot of, you know, very like ticket mastery like uh, fees. And so we've worked with them to create a workaround. And so you can fill out a Google form to reserve um, uh, space uh, to, to pick up your tickets at the door. So that, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to work around for those, for those fees, cause they, cause they can be hefty. Um, and, you know, especially when we only charge $20 for our tickets, um, it, it, it it's a lot. I mean, it, you know, maybe if we were charging 50, 60 bucks per ticket, it would, it would melt into it somehow and you just be like that. It is what it is. But when it's $20 and you see the fees, you're just like, mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, we, 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 we are happy to do that work around for our patrons and just, you know, feel like, feel like you can have some security without extra fees. You'll still have to pay sales tax, but you know, bring cash, be as, be as, you know, uh, be as inexpensive as uh, that's not the right word I'm looking for. <laughs> Whatever. It's Friday and we open tomorrow and my brain is, just teetering out. Take a breath. It'll be okay. Yeah, just breathe. What else do we need to know? What else do we need? To, I think that's. I mean, I think that's it. I think that so you're at the Broadway. We are at the Broadway. The tickets, the tickets. We need to go to the website to get the tickets. What, no matter what form, fashion, we're going to do that in. We need to yeah. bring our, our vaccine cards and an ID. We do not want positive COVID tests. We want negative COVID tests. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Wear a mask yeah. or two if you feel. That you need that you need both of them right nobody's going to judge um so you're making your audience safe as well and the show runtime is between 60 and 70 minutes yeah it's super so those, are good, those are good things to know about wink right yeah. that opens tomorrow and yeah. runs through november 6th so yeah. are you doing just weekend weekend only how many shows total uh i think that i think it's I think it's 10 in total um it's mm -hmm. it's saturday sunday thursday friday saturday sunday Thursday, Friday, Saturday is what okay. we've got. So, um, yeah, come, come and see us. It's, it, 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 you know, we're, we're, I really try my best to get some newer stuff out there into Milwaukee. All the other stuff is covered. You've got your Shakespeare, you've got your musicals, you've got all the things. So, you know, I'm, I'm just doing my part to create a well-balanced Milwaukee theatrical community. Uh, I just happen to be on the on the dark end, you know. So I'm going to ask this. I'm going to ask this question before we let Ekene and and Jamie go. Um, but this is a question for all of you. So from your perspective, what do you want the audience to leave with? Oh, I've stumped you. No, no, no. I, I I was just letting them go first if they wanted to go first. I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Um, one of my favorite lines in the play. This, this isn't, isn't one of mine. It's um, actually Rebecca and Scales. Um, when she talks about all unpredictably, all unpredictability leaving her life, and he goes, "Oh, that's a bad thing." And as a the senior member of this cast and probably the entire production, as you get older, your life becomes more and more predictable. Because I think back, like when I was like in my early twenties, late teens, and stuff. Your whole life is unpredictable. You drove cruddy cars. You never knew if you're going to make it someplace. You call people up. Your friends are just stopped by, and then and there was just like this whole series of unpredictability, and that's truly a line in our play. And and I just think to myself, well, yeah, some of that unpredictability is really kind of fun. You know, I I used to like it when people would just stop by, you know, and just kind of like. That, that was what your day would be. You know, everything wasn't so regimented as it is when you kind of progress through your life. And so I think um, maybe, yeah, maybe that's what I will hope audiences take away, just to, to kind of accept the unpredictability of life. I love that. Ekene, have you thought of one yet? Yeah, I've kind of thought of one. Uh, I think what I am thinking of is so we just we are still in the middle of like this global pandemic and in the middle of this a lot of people are realizing that the things some of some some of the things that they're doing are not very fulfilling and uh are making these shifts and going after these things that they are truly passionate about or that they really actually want to do and i think something that 
I think we should take out away from I was something that I want the audience to take away from this place is just set yourself free uh and follow your ideas and your heart um yeah not gonna go any further into where that comes from but I just set yourself free it's a beautiful sentiment I love it. I love it I love it all right Jay Malin what do you yeah. want the audience to walk away with yeah, it's 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 on those it's on those similar themes. There's a there's a there's a great image. I shouldn't say that because I built it, but it's there's a there's a they, it's really them. They look great. Uh, that um, and that I that I realized as I was watching the run the other night that I was like, oh, this is this is sort of the thing, like the thing. It's like she's saying she's saying that th go for it, go for it. Do the thing that makes you scared. Uh, make noise. Make a big noise. Uh, go feral, like you know, like that, like that, like th that. You know, she's she's saying, do 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 those things. Go get out there. Don't 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 be stagnant. Don't be don't don't be don't be afraid. You know, be be who you are too. Is a is a big one mm -hmm. in there. So yeah. Well, this sounds lovely. So I wanted, I just want to say thank you to Ekene and Jamie um, and obviously Jamie Lynn for, um, for being vulnerable this morning and sharing some of your journey as actors. Um, I cannot wait to see this performance. It opens tomorrow. Go to theconstructivist.org um, to get some tickets, whether you get them uh, in person or online, uh, and, but be there before November 6th. Um, because as Jamalyn said, we need all kinds of theater in the city, uh, and and we also need that support too. So, um, so uh, Akane and Jamie, thank you for hanging out with me this morning. I think Jamalyn's going to put on her other hat for a second, and we're going to talk about some other things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we. Oh, she's like a superhero. Brilliant. <laughs> what are we doing? Okay. Yeah. While she gets ready, gentlemen, we'll see you. We'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes. Bye. Uh, All yeah. right. Mm. MC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I gotta now I gotta do the other thing and pretend right. that, you know, pretend that I don't actually also make art. You know, I, you know, it's like this. The, it's been. It's been. I'm gonna say that it's been a struggle for me. I'm just gonna say that I, you know the 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 rest of the people are all young and fantastic and amazing. I just feel like I've nearly lost my mind. Um, it and all I can say is it's pandemic. That's that's all I can say about it. Is that you know I've had I've had a lot of times saying to them you know that. It just feels harder. It just, it just, we're just tired. I think I let the actors go at nine thirty the other night, and and because it, it just, you know, you just reach the, you just reach a wall, and you're just going like it, it, at a certain point, you just have to let let be what it is, and and be okay with that. Yeah. So, um, they 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 have done a tremendous job. Just, I mean, just I. I can't even imagine when you see the, when you see this, you're going to go, how did they do that? How many just, weeks did you rehearse? Just, what's that? How many weeks did you rehearse? Five. Okay. Yeah. In the evenings, right? Cause you go Five in the other... evenings and, and, you know, on Saturdays and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of our rehearsals had to be, uh, paused and, 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 you know, second half canceled for a COVID thing a friend of a friend and you know we all had to be safe and and yeah. that's it and so it's just it's just a different universe and there's just so many things i'm so behind on so so much and you know ticket sales are abysmal because nobody knows about it and you know these things or or that nobody knows about it and people are still nervous mm -hmm. and so you know we're going to move forward the, these actors and the team are great and and wonderful and and i behoove everyone to come and see because you will say how did they do that in five weeks mm -hmm. five weeks in the evenings on and on weekends right to, well, to I like, I, open. 
And to your point, like everything is harder. That is absolutely 100% true. They are studying, like I just read a study the other day from Harvard about pandemic brain. Yeah. And I thought I tick every single one of those boxes. I can't yeah. think of words. I stumble over. I don't know if I don't have my phone with me. I have no idea what I'm doing on it. I don't know what day it is, right? These are yeah. all things that are very real. And to your point, you know, um, sometimes it is just about uh, people knowing about it and not, but also not feeling comfortable enough to be in attendance. And that's okay too, right? Because we are yep. all, we're all going through it, right? Everybody's yep. going through it. So, to, so to your point of you will be amazed, right? These actors are working in a much harder place, time and place than we ever yes. were before. Um, but we're figuring it out and we are, yep. we are figuring it out and we are being as safe as possible. And we are, doing the thing we're going to continue to tell stories because we as humans need that interaction we need yeah. um we need the stories to be heard and we and as actors and directors we need to tell those stories um and that's what makes us a community you know so kudos to all of you for for working through this right for yeah. just working through um uh and that that in itself is a feat uh in these in these days and times so so congratulate yourself for getting to the place where you're opening and um, and running, you know, and and, and you. safely, you know. Yeah, and to, I I did I did finally finally have that thought of like, wait a minute, we have to be there for the people who are ready. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Some people might not be, but we have to be there for the ones who mm -hmm. are. Um, you know, and you and I just I feel so passionately about the cathartic experience of live theater that um yeah I, I i hope people can can feel that in this very fast piece mm -hmm. and so. there's something to, there's something to be said just about that statement jamie lynn like as i, I started i started this interview like as a teacher we you know our enrollment this this session for pink was was lower right a lot lower than it has been since the pandemic began but the thought of like, even if there's one student that wants to take a class, we're doing it, you know, because yep. that, that person has, has asked for it, requested it, needed it. And, and we will, we will make it work. Right. Because, because we know that we are changing the world one person at a time. Right. So, um, so yeah, so keep marching on. There are though, there are, there's another show that's happening tonight, right? This weekend, you did an interview yesterday. Tell us about what's happening in the city. There's things that are going on. There, there are a ton of things. And yes. that, that this is, this is no joke. Uh, we, you know, we want to say happy opening to Cabaret Milwaukee. They're, uh, they're third in the, in their series of, of, uh, of this, uh, radio play, live radio play. I saw, I saw them. This started before pandemic, and so they're finally getting to this, to the third thing. So another person, Josh Bryan, who kept pushing forward and you know is ready to to storytell again. So so happy opening to them. You can go to cabaretmke uh, dot com is how you can find them. Also happy uh, opening today to Renaissance Theater Works, The Cake by Becca Brunstetter. Um, very, uh, very great story about, um, you know, LGBTQ and, and, and building cakes and things like that. And I, they had pictures on their Facebook of their set. Whoo, ooh, very beautiful and lovely and amazing. I mean, of course. So you can go to rtw com for that uh happy closing to uh our interview that we had yesterday um with michael lucchese uh and that was this is a always always uh really great uh, independent producers we need to celebrate them and 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 draw more attention to them because they are the ones who keep things going as well um and this is over at Sunstone Studios. We keep talking about them. They did a wonderful job with that off the wall space. And so uh, you can go to sunstonestudiosmke.com to find out more about it's between two rivers. And they, uh, yep, they're going through Sunday at their final performances at 5 p.m. at Sunstone. So Densitaria at 53212 presents just a really 
fun and inventive and amazing series that they do on Sunday mornings with a DJ and you can do it virtually and in person. Mm -hmm. And it's, I've, I've started referring to it as, you know, church for some people. Um, and, uh, and so you can go to 53212presents.org. Great organization. Their, their whole mission is to create accessibility in 53212 zip code. Um, mm -hmm. And we need more people who are doing that kind of work for sure. This is opening Thursday at Sunstone. So, I mean, they are just cranking stuff out right now. Just amazing the amount of projects that they've been just going back to back to back to back. Uh, this is an adaptation by one of my personal favorites, Maya Danks, who was in uh, the Nether last year. Wonderful artist and, and just good all around decent human being. Uh, so that will open Thursday. That is that is her adaptation directed by Lynette Alexander Islam, uh, who we had on a few weeks ago uh, because she's kind of directing uh, several of their projects. So that's very cool. Uh, so you again, go to Sunstone Studios, mke.com for that. Uh, Milwaukee Opera Theater has their Home Cooked Heroes uh, uh, project with the Decameron Opera Coalition. Oh, I really wish I would have. Let me see if I can Google it super fast. Because uh, I really love how they describe this. They just had a live concert as well. Um, oh man, I'm not going to be able to find it. Okay, never mind. Uh, go to go to MilwaukeeOperaTheater.org. It's a it's a super interesting, mind blowing project, mm -hmm. and, the, and it's only fifteen dollars, and you and it's and it's on the internet, and they are doing some live concerts if you can catch them around the city. Um, just go and check it out. I mean, you know, they're just doing some amazing inventive fringe opera at at MOT and they and and you I am not an opera person and I enjoy the work they do because it's so effing cool. So Joanna is my hero. Um, please do this. Please do this if you can. I know that I understand that there are people who can't, but if you can, please do this. I, I know it's nerve wracking and, you know, all the things about your arm hurting and all of it, you know, but just for the, for the good of humanity, for the good of um, theater and live performance and all of it, please, uh, you can go to vaccine.gov or, or something like that and get, and get access to where you can get vaccine. I mean, really, you can walk into any Walgreens now and just go, hey, can you just stick something in my arm? Uh, very uh, important, imaginemke.org. They help us by providing this platform, this awesome producing platform, and uh, just a wonderful organization. I just touched base with them yesterday because they, they've been really sort of silent on social media as of late, and I'm just going, where are you guys? And, the, and David Lee was all, they're just busy. They're just busy, which is what they do, and they are amaz an amazing group of people promoting the arts in Milwaukee and... Mm -hmm. Uh, go to imaginemke.org slash act, and they will give you all the tools you need to contact your representatives and, um, and find all the things that you need to do to be a, a, a better arts advocate, because I know a lot of you out there are already great arts advocates, but just to be a better one, they have all the tools built for you right there. So... <sighs> Well, thank you. Thanks like, for there's a um, ton of stuff. There is a ton of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, get get out there. Get out there. The, people are doing the best they can to to keep people safe. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we've we've lived with all kinds of viruses for all kinds of years, and I I know that this is different. Um, but everybody's working really hard in the medical community and the theater community and the arts community to make sure that we can get the other vital things that we need, which are human connection mm -hmm. and camaraderie and art. We need these, we need these things too. Netflix is great. Sometimes aren't we supposed to boycott them right now? Yeah, I think uh, so. And uh, so Netflix is not great, but 
<laughs> Just the IOTC nice. strike and all the things. Okay, so you know what? <laughs> Online stuff is crap. You should go and see some live theater. <laughs> so go see theater. So go and see some live theater. I put that somewhere. I think Alexandra Billings wrote something on Facebook about about the the Netflix strike, and I was like, go and see some non equity storefront theater. <laughs> Go see some theater or go outside, right? Bundle up, go outside. Enjoy I love the this dinner. weather. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I, you just, yeah, throw on some extra stuff and enjoy it. Enjoy and if the you, music. And if you, uh, uh, if you are not able to attend right now, that is okay. Yep. Sharing and encouraging others to attend is super helpful to small theater companies like ours um, and the theater companies here in town. So, even just sharing that post or that link yep. uh, socially um, or within your group of friends is super helpful to all of us too. So there's a lot of theater going on. Jamie Lynn, you have a whole show that is opening in 24 hours. So I'm sure that you have stuff to do. Um, I always appreciate hanging out with you. Yeah, just a little. I always appreciate hanging out with you. Thank you for asking me to guest again in this week. Um, Thank you for being you. My, my constant backup. I I'm just... I'm, I just appreciate that so much because I I have grown to to love doing this program and what it stands for and what it and what it means to the community and I know that not a lot of people are able to watch live but I know that people go back and watch and mm -hmm. um, I, I think I think it's just it's a it's a, it's a conversation starter and, and it's and it's good to put the focus where it needs to be and yeah. So thank you. Thank you again. And thank you all out there for watching and sticking with us in this longer conversation. And, um, and we will see you next week on You've Got a